Hello, and welcome to the March installment of Construction Junction, presented to you by MSU Infrastructure Planning and Facilities. We hope that you find this new online format of Construction Junction useful and informative. If you have any comments or questions concerning this presentation, or have suggestions on how we might improve, please let us know via the feedback box on the Construction Junction webpage located at the address on the screen. We thank you in advance for helping us improve your experience. The agenda for the March presentation will begin with updates on which projects are going to the next two Board of Trustees meetings. There will then be an informational presentation on the campus snow plan. We will then have updates on the following projects. Grand Rapids Real Estate and Research Facility Development, Bresen Student Event Center, Facility Upgrades, MSU Scene Shop, Kellogg Center, Alterations to Room 61, 62, and Corniche Room, Engineering Building Chiller Replacement, and Giltner Hall, Alterations to Fish Lab. Beginning with the April Board of Trustees meetings, the projects going to the board will be, for Step 1, Authorization to Plan, Engineering Research Complex, Addition 4, and Renovations, and for Step 3, Bid and Contract Award, Food Processing and Innovation Center. Moving on to the June BOT meeting, the projects going to the board will be, for Step 1, Authorization to Plan, Hanna Administration Building, Third Floor Alterations, and Spartan Stadium, Installation of Permanent Lights. And for Step 2, Authorization to Proceed, Data Center, Construct Original Building. We begin this month's presentation with an overview of the campus snow plan. As we've seen in the last few weeks, Michigan weather can often be unpredictable and challenging. When conditions warrant, we ask that you practice good snow safety by giving yourself extra time to travel to work, driving carefully, dressing warmly, wearing sensible shoes with good traction, being extra aware of where you are walking and the condition of your path, shortening the length of your stride, and remembering to check the forecast before heading outside. For your safety, please remember to not dart out in front of or behind snow removal equipment. It is large, loud, and difficult to stop quickly. And please make eye contact with snow removal equipment operators before crossing in front of them. The university uses a combination of brine and ice melt compound to combat icy conditions. Brine solution works by preventing adhesion of snow to hard surfaces while ice melt is used on ice that is already formed. Often both are used in combination to speed the time it takes for the melting compound to take effect. If you see any icy spots on campus, please call the campus operators at 353-1760 to report. Please remember that it does take time for ice melt compound to take effect. Here you can see the effect that preventative brining has on the ability of crews to cleanly remove snow and ice. The areas that were brined kept snow and ice from sticking to them, thus allowing complete removal, unlike the areas that were not brined, which still retain some snow and ice even after snow removal equipment has passed. Again, an example of the preventative effect of brining ahead of a snow event. We ask that the campus community partner with IPF crews to help ensure everyone's safety by applying ice melt compound to areas outside of building entrances if they see slick spots. This helps avoid incidents until our crews have had a chance to clear the area. There are marked buckets of ice melt compound available at all entrances for this purpose. However, we also ask that you please be judicious with your use of ice melt compound in order to minimize the environmental impacts. Please do not park so close to sidewalks that your vehicle's bumper hangs over it. This makes clearing the sidewalk with our motorized equipment impossible. We also ask that you avoid parking in sections of lots that have not yet been cleared, either parking in already cleared areas or waiting for our crews to finish clearing the lot before parking. We remind everyone that parking is prohibited in residence hall loops from 2 to 6 a.m. Our crews have a formidable task ahead of them after a snow event, and keeping these areas free from vehicles helps removal efforts go more smoothly and quickly. Again, if you see icy or dangerous spots on campus, please call the campus operator at 353-1760. If you're not able to call, you can also tweet us 
at MSU facilities. For more information about MSU snow removal plans, visit ipf.msu.edu. There you can find information on snow and ice removal services, as well as our environmentally green efforts. You can also email any feedback, suggestions, or comments to snowplan.ipf.msu.edu. We thank you for helping us keep MSU safe during the upcoming winter season. We next have an update on the Grand Rapids Real Estate and Research Facility Development Project. This project is located in the heart of Grand Rapids in the area known as the Medical Mile. As indicated before, this is an off-campus project being completed in the city of Grand Rapids in the North Monroe neighborhood as part of the Medical Mile area. This site was chosen because of its proximity to the downtown area as well as other medical and research facilities. This building will be the cornerstone of the North Monroe neighborhood redevelopment and river restoration projects. On November 19, the placement of the final steel beam was marked with a topping off ceremony that included researchers as well as an address from the interim dean of the College of Human Medicine, Dr. Aaron Souza. Construction on this project began in June and is scheduled to be ready for occupancy in July of 2017. Currently, the project is running on schedule. Here you see the site plan for the new structure. It will abut both Michigan Street and Monroe Avenue with ample space to the north for parking. The site has additional space available to accommodate any future possible additions. Here is an aerial view rendering of the plaza. It is worth noting that as part of the North Monroe neighborhood redevelopment, there are plans to build a restaurant and mixed-use space directly across Monroe Avenue from the building. Here we have an exterior rendering of the view from Monroe Street. Here you see progress of the site beginning on March 23, 2015 with demolition of the existing Grand Rapids Press Building and progressing to February 25 of this year. Here you see the weather enclosure that allows for work to be continued on the building interior, protected from cold temperatures and inclement weather. Work is ongoing with the installation of studs, drywall, conduit, piping, and ductwork. At this time, approximately 95% of the mechanical equipment is in place in the building penthouse. Here you see examples of some of the components that are being installed in the structure, including color-coded conduit and spray-on fireproofing. Many of these components have been pre-manufactured to allow for more efficient installation. Some of the building systems, including the exterior walls and lab workspaces, are being tested in mock-up versions prior to installation to ensure that all components work together to desired specifications. At this time, plans are being finalized with regard to furniture design and scientific equipment selection. Here you see some of the completed concrete and mechanical systems installations. Work continues on the installation of the atrium skylight, as well as work on the second floor of the atrium. For those of you who would like to follow the progress of construction on this project, please check out the live webcam site at the address on the screen. There you will be able to see past and present views of the site. In this capture, you can see an example of exterior wall mock-up that is being tested prior to the installation of the entire system. If you would like further information about this or any other project, visit the construction.msu.edu webpage. There you will find links to all current and past projects. Specific questions regarding the Grand Rapids Real Estate and Research Development Project can be directed to the design representative, Dick Temple, the project representative, Mike Morgan, or the construction manager, Chad Webster, with Clark Rockford Construction. Next, we have an update on the work that has begun on the Breslin Student Event Center Facility Upgrades Project. The Breslin Center is located in the Athletic and Recreation District. The university is undertaking this project in order to enhance the student, alumni, fan, and public experience by improving the functionality of the event center, to create a lasting legacy by integrating a sense of Spartan tradition throughout the facility, and to extend the useful life of the building by improving services to the fans and implementing major maintenance items. The project will be divided into two phases, facility upgrades and athletics addition. The phases are being designed in a way that minimizes rework 
and are being fully coordinated throughout their design and construction. Phase 1 will include a 22,000 square foot addition around the building, an expanded concourse, renovation and upgrading of the restroom facilities, renovation of concession stands, improvements to the entry vestibules to main concourse, improvements to finish levels and experience on the concourse, improvements to site conditions for ingress and egress, improvements to site security, replacement of the chiller system, and connection to the East Lansing water system. Phase 2 will include a 30,000 square foot addition which will create a sense of main entry and destination into the building and which will include a basketball hall of history. Construction on this project began in January and is expected to be complete by August of 2017. Here is a drawing of the existing concourse floor plan. This project will expand the concourse areas to allow for better flow and improved amenities. Here you see the proposed floor plan of the completed facility upgrades showing the expansion of the concourse area, the new restroom and concession areas, and the new Hall of History. Here you see an artist rendering of the upgraded concourse area at the northwest gate. Entrances will now have expanded plazas for better pedestrian flow as well as double sets of doors to improve temperature control. Another rendering, this time of the northeast gate. Note that artwork around the facility can be switched out depending on the event being held at the center, whether it be an athletic event, graduation commencement, or other happening. Another rendering of the improved concourse area. Here is a rendering of the proposed Basketball Hall of History. This area is designed to celebrate the rich history of MSU basketball and to provide fans an improved overall experience. In this area, as in other areas of the facility, artwork and displays can be changed out to offer variety as the season progresses. Another view of the Hall of History. Part of this new addition will include a lower level strength and conditioning center. It is exciting to note that former MSU basketball great and current Golden State Warrior, Draymond Green, contributed $3.1 million towards funding of this center. As part of the Breslin upgrade, there will also be changes to the area surrounding the center. A new plaza outside of the Hall of History is planned, with the Magic Johnson statue being slightly relocated to accommodate the new addition. There will also be improvements to adjacent parking and loading areas, as well as a new crosswalk across Harrison Road to the newly constructed parking ramp. Here you see views of the planned concourse expansions and entry improvements from the south, north, and west sides of the center. Here you see an artist rendering of the Hall of History Plaza, which will include the relocated Magic Johnson statue. And here's another view of the exterior of the Hall of History. Work is progressing on the pouring of the new addition footings as well as demolition work to prepare for the new addition. If you would like further information about this or any other project, visit the construction.msu.edu webpage. There you will find links to all current and past projects. Specific questions regarding the Breslin Center Facility Upgrades Project can be directed to the construction representative, Jason Van Zee, or the design representative, Jeff Bonk. Now we have a wrap-up of the MSU Scene Shop Construct Replacement Building Project. This project is located in the Service District, just to the north of the MSU Federal Credit Union. This project was necessary to provide the MSU Theater Department an alternate location for their scene shop, which was displaced as part of the 1855 Place Project at Harrison Road and Kalamazoo Street. The scope of the project included replacement of shop and storage space, in a 10,000 square foot pole barn type structure. The scene shop is an integral component of the Department of Theater course curriculum and supports construction of sets for theater and music opera program performances. The facility includes production areas, offices, restrooms, and a tool room. Construction began in October and the structure was ready for occupancy in late December. Move-in began the first week of January. Here is the original site plan for the project. Since the initial plan, an addition for office space, mechanical room, restrooms, and a tool room was added to the south, as well as additional sidewalk access and bike loops. 
Here is a view of the main production area, which includes crane trolleys, which will support construction of scenes up to 20 feet high. There is also a painting booth at the far end of the building. Access to the office space, mechanical room, restrooms, and tool room are to the left. The yellow welding curtains you see in this shot help isolate the areas in which welding work is occurring, protecting surrounding areas from sparks, arc, and fumes. Here is a picture of the completed facility showing the addition that houses the mechanical room, office space, restrooms, and tool room, as well as the new access sidewalk and bike loops. If you would like further information about this or any other project, visit the construction.msu.edu webpage. There you will find links to all current and past projects. Specific questions regarding the MSU Scene Shop project can be directed to the construction representative, Kevin Durkin. Next, we have an update on the project to upgrade rooms 61, 62, and the Corniche Room at the Kellogg Center. The Kellogg Center is located in the Northwest Residential District. This project was necessary to improve the aesthetics and technology available in these rooms. The scope of the project included demolition of all room interiors, installation of new flooring and wall coverings, installation of new lighting and electrical, and new technology, including audiovisual and data wireless. Impacts to the campus community included inavailability of the rooms during construction. Construction began in December of 2015 and the areas are now ready for occupancy. Here you see a photo of the renovations to room 62, including new carpeting, furniture, and AV equipment. The renovations to room 61 have been completed and the room is currently being used for cashier training. Here you see a photo of the renovations to the Corniche room in progress. If you would like further information about this or any other project, visit the construction.msu.edu webpage. There you will find links to all current and past projects. Specific questions regarding the Kellogg Center Room Renovations Project can be directed to the construction representative, Kevin Durkin. Next we have an update on the Engineering Building Chiller Replacement Project. The Engineering Building is located in the Central Academic District, just west of Anthony Hall. This project serves to replace aging cooling equipment at the end of its useful service life, to implement a comprehensive, long-range plan to create a regional chilled water loop among six buildings, including Engineering, Anthony Hall, Food Science, Natural Resources, Packaging, and Communication Arts and Sciences, and to create a chilled water network serving the affected buildings as efficiently as possible. This project is being completed in two phases in order to minimize disruptions. Phase one involves construction of a chilled water loop, which will include site excavation near Engineering Building South Wing, site excavation between Engineering's Dow Wing and Anthony Hall, and installation of new chilled water main piping. Phase two will involve equipment upgrades in satellite buildings to include additions of pumps and controls in natural resources, packaging, and communication arts and sciences, and decommissioning of the aging electric chiller at Communication Arts. This phase will also involve chiller replacement at Engineering Building to include replacement of steam absorption chillers with new electric chillers, expansion of building electrical substation, and installation of new roof-mounted cooling towers. To comply with the university's energy and sustainability imperative, the new chillers will produce chilled water using 60% less energy than the absorption machines currently installed. They will fit in the existing mechanical room, avoiding excessive site disturbances for a building addition. They are also large enough to be baseloaded versus Anthony and food science chillers, with the most efficient machines in the loops meeting the cooling demands in all six buildings for the majority of the year. This project will avoid investing in a chiller plant at both the engineering building and communication arts and sciences, thus saving money. The impacts to the campus community will include pedestrian detours during site construction. Construction zones will be properly separated to prevent unauthorized access. Building crane lifts will be coordinated in advance. No adverse parking impacts are expected. Site access will require contractor coordination and just-in-time deliveries. Pedestrian circulation on site will be impacted summer of 2015, 
with minimal impacts lasting until April of 2016. Construction on this project began in May of 2015, with pedestrian circulation restored in August. The chiller system will be substantially complete in April of 2016. Here is an aerial view of the Phase II construction site zone. Note that all building entrances will remain open during this phase. Here you see the location on the engineering building roof where the new cooling towers have been installed. Here is a photo of the engineering building mechanical room after installation of one of two new chiller units. And here is a view of the second chiller that was installed in the engineering building basement. Here you see a photo of the new pumps which are located in the basement of the engineering building. If you would like further information about this or any other project, visit the construction.msu.edu webpage. There you will find links to all current and past projects. Specific questions regarding the Engineering Building Chiller Replacement Project can be directed to the construction representative, Todd Wilson. Lastly, we have an update on the Giltner Hall Fish Lab renovations. Giltner Hall is located in the North Academic District. This project is being coordinated by the Faculty Readiness Project Team. This team is comprised of representatives from both infrastructure planning and facilities, as well as facilities planning and space management. They work together with colleges to proactively plan for potential new hires, utilizing various delivery methods to shorten the bidding process, and creating construction timelines that provide a positive experience for the college and a welcoming environment for new faculty. This process helps to deliver a project that is of high quality, time and cost efficient, and supports the advancement of the university's research agenda. This project is necessary to provide a new zebrafish facility and various supporting lab and office spaces for two new integrative biology researchers that have been recruited from Oregon. The scope of the project includes renovations to rooms 39, 40, 41, 65, 67, 344A, and 363. In rooms 39, 40, and 41, there will be new security access, new lighting controls, cosmetic upgrades to the office in room 39, shoring a floor from the sub-basement, connections to aquaneering fish lab equipment, including three large fish tank rows in the main fish room, new flooring, ceiling, and furniture in the developmental lab, a new quarantine room, a changing room for faculty, infill of an existing lab door, a new mechanical room with equipment for the lab's own HVAC system which provides required air changes and temperature requirements for the fish room, and exterior door and masonry work for the entryway to the new mechanical room. In room 65 and 67, there will be a new wall installed to separate the imaging and injection areas. In rooms 344A and 363, there will be cosmetic upgrades to the labs and offices on the third floor. Impacts to building occupants will include construction noise and periodic steam shutdowns. Construction began in March and will continue through July. Here you see photos of the existing areas prior to demolition, both the main fish lab as well as the imaging and injection lab. The plans for the new space are currently 90% complete and will create office space, developmental labs, a changing area, quarantine room, fish room, filtration room, and a mechanical room. Here you see more detailed plans of both the injection and imaging lab in room 67, as well as the renovated office space in room 39. If you would like further information about this or any other project, visit the construction.msu.edu webpage. There you will find links to all current and past projects. Specific questions regarding the Giltner Hall Fish Lab project can be directed to the Faculty Readiness Project representative, Monty Pride. This concludes the March Construction Junction presentation. We encourage you to visit the Infrastructure Planning and Facilities website at www.ipf.msu.edu. There you will find information on construction and maintenance alerts, detour information, construction junction information, project, and contact information. There are also a number of other IPF resources available, including listservs that you can subscribe to to keep up to date with various IPF projects and events. Stay connected with IPF via social media. 
follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and watch our videos on YouTube. Construction Junction presentations will be made available on the CJ website beginning the 7th of each month. For our April presentation, we will be holding our annual Construction Awareness Day event on Thursday, April 14th at 8.30 a.m. in the College of Law, Room 474. We will then return to the online format beginning in May. We thank you for taking the time to check us out, and we hope you'll visit again.